Created by Bill Everett in 1939, Namor was an anti-hero protagonist whose exploits often included the violent, intentional, and unintentional murder of human beings, overreactions to perceived flights or lack of respect for a standing in lineage, and a dour opinion of humanity as a race of bloodthirsty warmongers. Namor's curiosity often led him into humanity's conflicts. At one point, he even joined the Allied forces to fight Nazis because a woman asked him to and she seemed nice and because he got to fight people wrecking his realm. In many ways, Namor's persona was the perfect reflection of the capricious nature of his realm, the sea. He could be calm, understanding, and compassionate one minute, and then tumultuous, violent, and destructive the next. The transition to the Silver Age, when he was brought into Marvel's universe in Fantastic Four number 4, marked a change in his demeanor. He changed from a reckless, young adult prone to impulsive acts of violence to a principled and regal ruler. Silver Age Namor was more calculating and contemplative about how and when to use force to get his point across. Still arrogant, this Namor often chose to let aggressors off with minor wounds and stern verbal warnings to showcase his awesome power. This brings us to Namor segments in the Marvel Super Heroes cartoon by Grand Trey Lawrence Animation with their usual cut and paste job coupled with phenomenal voice acting, great art, and unintentional Silver Age humor. Most of the material is from the Tales of Astonish, but copyright bullshit would prove to complicate matters. Hanna-Barbera had the rights to the Fantastic Four, so Namor's introduction couldn't include them. At the same time, Hanna-Barbera was not allowed to use Namor, so they had to use an XB instead. Due to the limited number of issues this show could cut and paste from, the viewer got a very serialized, condensed look at who Namor was and the water politics side of the character. Up until what was supposed to be the grand finale, where Namor teams up with Doctor Doom and sends the Baxter Building and Fantastic Four into space, again, couldn't use the Fantastic Four, so Grand Trey Lawrence replaced them with the X-Men, and with the same plot, made no sense, but when you don't want to animate, you have to make some sacrifices, and a coherent story was one of them. But is this show worth a look? Well, see for yourself. My head spins, and my limbs are weak, yet some powerful compulsion drives me on. There is something here that I must find. I must... There's a law about sleeping on the beach. Come on, on your feet. What's your name? And where do you live? I... I am... I cannot remember. A trip to the station might refresh your memory. Unhand me, no one touches my person. And nobody strikes an officer of the law. You're under arrest. Think you your puny weapons can frighten me? Brother, that does it. I'll book you for... Hey! I want every source of water in the city patrolled. The East River, the waterfront, and keep a sharp eye on the fire hydrant. The aquarium! We forgot the aquarium. With all those fish? Why not? He's certainly used to them. We have you! There's no way out. How are we going to get him out of there? Same as we would any creature of the sea. With a net. There are times I wish I'd taken up another career. It is what I seek, but it is guarded by a giant killer squid. <laughs> Coils in bewilderment. Quid is upon me. I am trapped. He has me in his grasp. If I don't act now, even the power of the mighty Submariner will be to no avail. Was I not born Namor, the avenging son? And hurled by the most powerful arm beneath the sea, the glistening object becomes as destructive as a guided missile. As it severs the rampaging monster's deadly tentacles. Using his body as a living drill, the mighty Namor bores his way to freedom. The pile of tribute to Krang is not yet high enough. Let the payments continue till it reaches my tunic. I warn you, I am invincible. This is the one chance. By shifting my weight when he least expects it, I can use his own power against him. I'm free. 
But there is only one way to truly defeat him. Using all my power, I'll create a giant whirlpool to sweep him away. How found you the strength to parry my sword? In truth, I am strength. I am Prince of the Blood, and I fight for my birthright. Oh, stay back. Nothing can survive your touch. Once again, the accursed Submariner is saved. Namor receives a message from the eels. The Lady Dora, the faceless ones. They are trying to tell me Lady Dorma is a prisoner of the faceless ones. There is one who escapes. My prince, seize your trident with thy hand, traitor. Now turn, evil Krang, and face your judgment. The crown of Atlantis is mine. Mercy, my lord, mercy. A giant man-eating clam. Caught between two deadly menaces, how can Prince Namor hope to escape his oncoming fate? Never surrenders! Though I am strangled by these treacherous tendrils and easy prey for this monstrous man-eating clam, yet will I resist to my dying breath! The creature's jaws open to engulf me! Once again do I prove myself the strongest being beneath the sea and everything that lives within this realm! That I did not vanquish the hated Submariner with my own hand! Yet, surely he is dead by now. Speak, or answer to my blast gun. I must try to distract him. It is my only chance. The ruse works, and within minutes, the Lady Dorma is on her way to find her prince. And while Lady Dorma is slowly drawn down to a terrifying end in the relentless quicksand, Namor and Vashti speed toward Atlantis. Nearing Atlantis, Prince Namor's path is suddenly blocked by a school of fish. Be gone. Be gone, I say. Nothing dares bar the way of the mighty Submariner. I sense they are trying to communicate with me. We must not delay, noble monarch. Atlantis is in dire peril. Wait. I am receiving a message from my citizens of the sea. They tell me my Lady Dorma is trapped in the quagmire of doom. And as the fearsome idol is brought before a tumor, a courageous Vashti stands undaunted before his captor. Fool! By refusing to tell me where the Submariner cowers, you have signed your own death warrant. My only regret is that the hated Namor is not here to join you in this final tryst. I shall join Lord Vashti, but in rightful vengeance. Ah! This iron bell shall be soldered about thy neck, and ye shall pass through the streets, so that all may see thy symbol of treachery. We're still too merciful a sentence. There is no peace within the fabled city of Atlantis, for just outside its impregnable iron gates, a mighty battle rages. The hatch door opens, and a freak accident occurs. Down, down, the strange figure falls to the waiting ocean. Destroy it! By the scepter of Neptune, I shall crush yon behemoth. Bring up the cannon. If you are neither man nor monster, what kind of devil are you? Did Neymar dispatch you here? Answer me, I command you! Ah, return to whatever murky depth you came from. I have no fear of... Look, he obeys. How can the mighty Submariner, with all his mortal strength, be a match for the inhuman, indestructible robot? Once inside the city, the robot stalks relentlessly toward the Palace Royal. If we cannot destroy him, he must be captured. Bring up the steel nets! 
his eyes. Their beams disintegrate our nets. Denizens of the deep, I call upon you to encircle the invader. Faster! Distract and confuse him! Still he advances. Let the giant squid appear. Let him know the deadly touch of your embrace. His eye beams vanquish them with ease. Oh, if I could short circuit whatever mechanism controls him. Let the electric eels come forth. Let the power of each be that of a thousand volts. Nothing deters him. Perhaps I can imprison him. Mighty whale, I order you to vanquish this menace to our domain. But even the mighty jaws of a monster whale are as nothing against the robot. Within the royal chambers, the Lady Dorma finds that which she seeks. Though I do not fathom his purpose, I shall not fail my prince. Although my strength is unmatched by living man, this creature is inexhaustible. <laughs> Done. Caught between two foes, the mighty submariner struggles on when suddenly Atuma's men recoil in shock at the awesome spectacle. And as the robot tightens its death grip, No! I alone shall destroy the enemies of Atlantis. Behold, my latest triumph. The laser gun. Long live Prince Nemo! Shoot him. I humbly request permission to accompany my lord. Request denied. After the last Holocaust, he was created by our greatest scientists to protect Atlantis against future disaster. But they made the behemoth so strong, they could not control him. The council was right. But if it is battle they want, it is battle they shall get. Namor! You're to blame for this. Always you humans blame the submariner. You never understand. Very well then, if enemies we must be, I shall seek a higher authority who can guarantee the safety of my kingdom. Namor, wait! The secret burial place, the dreaded behemoth to whom any living thing is an enemy. Human cattle! Ah, now I'm weary of this sport. Nemo requires worthier foes. We forgot he can fly. If he gets much higher, we're gonna lose him. He's heading for that electric billboard. Nemo, surrender. We don't want to hurt you. Mustn't let him get out of range. Prepare to fire. And one bullet hits its mark. They dare threaten my very life. Get your men to safety, Sergeant. He's got muscles he ain't even used yet. Ha-ha! <laughs> they scatter like ants. I'll not drop the sign, but let it remain there as a reminder of the power of the Submariner. Prince, where are you? Here, Dorma. In the shadows to your left. <laughs> Tangle him in his own rope like hair. It's no use. I failed before I'd begun. Oh, attack! Kill the behemoth! I must swim as close as I can. It's done! 
to hurl myself away before I too am swept into the bottomless pit. Atlantis, or Prince Namor the First, is once again proving that he is the strongest, bravest monarch of all. One way to reach it. Only the mighty Submariner can use his body as a living drill. What ice creature is this that bars my way? Deadly ice rays! Just what I need for a weapon. But nothing happens. The word of Neptune is not to be doubted. He would not deceive me. Perhaps if I rub it, the friction may bring it to life. There. It's beginning to glow and pulsate. What sorcery is this? But there's a monster. He seeks to engulf me. There are more. I'm surrounded. And as Prince Namor prepares to fight for his life against the amoebas, millions of leagues away in his cavern laboratory, Xantor gloats. Ah, there are too many. I cannot elude them all. Molecules, enormous molecules. They will crush me if I do not escape. But then I shall turn your own strength against you. <laughs> Nothing must stop me now. At last, the X atom, just as Father Neptune said. Who are you? And what do you want in the realm of the X atom? I am Prince Namor the First of Atlantis, Lord of the Seven Seas, and Stop. I... Stop! Your communication is too slow for me. Be still, and I shall search your mind and discover all. The disintegrator gun, I must destroy it! So, the mighty Submariner runs for his life. Ha ha, the brave prince, fleeing like the coward he is. What? No! No, I'll not let you! Too late, Xantor. You must fight without weapons now. This time I banish you to the forbidden deeps from which no man returns. No! No! Men call me Lorelei, and soon you will call me wife. If this be some joke... Taking a husband is no jesting matter. Then you are doomed to maidenhood. What sorcery is this? I shall keep you imprisoned until you agree to take me as your bride. Nothing stops Namor, Lord of the Seven Seas. Our ear shall henceforth be deaf to your siren song. No man has ever spurned me, nor shall Namor of Atlantis. I will find a way to make him mine. Such a monster could only be conjured up by Lord. Breathes fire which is my mortal enemy. Yet I must vanquish him if I am to reach Dorma in time. If I could but force him to the surface, it is my only chance. I suspect it. He cannot long withstand the atmosphere above. The advantage now is mine. There, your fiery tongue will lash no more. And as sea trumpets herald the approach of the bride and groom-to-be, play for time, Lord Vashti, for I shall need every precious second. May Neptune go with you, brave prince. Gold condinium. Gold con what? For your edification, my young dolt, gold condinium is a metallic fluid possessing 10,000 times the penetrating power of a laser beam. If I'm hearing right, that gold con, whatever it is, could blow up the whole world. Come then, ruthless one. Let us match skills. Only by challenging the fearsome hunter of the sea can I test my reflexes. What is this? The killer reacts strangely. A strange torpor seemed to affect the people, a slowing down. As with the killer whale. What? They are attacking. I must escape their fatal beams. They block my way. I am trapped. 
How can even the gallant Submariner fight against such odds? If I could force them to concentrate all their beams in one spot, it might bring their accursed catacombs down around them. Gentlemen, victory is ours. Man, I dig these diggings. You dare to defy me? I hate to spoil your heroics, but you seem to have forgotten the girl. You must not harm her. She will die in any case, and so shall you. One! Your puny surface weapons are no match for the monarch of Atlantis. Two! He's ripping up the post! Stop him! Thank Neptune she is still here. Who goes there? I'd have sworn I heard a noise. Couldn't have been her. She can't talk or... As master of the Seven Seas, I have forces beyond your imagination. I don't see any forces. Me neither. Find it necessary to rid this army of its general. Captain? Yikes! Get away from me! Help! The antidote for the drug. Explode it quickly. Observe. It will work instantly. Ago, a comet passed through Argon, ripping our planet from its orbit. Argon was sent into space to become a wandering world. In passing, the comet has emanated strange rays, which affected the hydrogen ions so that they would no longer combine with oxygen to form water. For the defender of Argon. A true prince of the blood needs no weapon. I shall fight with my own strength and wits. It will be to no avail against the defender's fire jet. Deadly monster is this. Even my amphibian strength could not save me if one of those energy bolts hits its mark. But still am I name or the avenging sun, and still is my speed and cunning superior to any. Now its energy fades. What madness is this? Its smothering force engulfs me. Air. Air. I must have air. My strength is ebbing fast. The deadly tail. None but the true submariner would have the power to force the poisoned tail into the creature's own body. A giant centipede. He is upon me, and I can neither swim nor fly to freedom. My body is enmeshed in his web. I am unable to move. You are the cause of this! You have betrayed Argon! Malmo, have you gone mad? Die, traitor! Enough talk. Let me be propelled far into space. My spinning powers must defuse the deadly atoms. By Neptune, I did it. I... Allies for peace. Bah! This is my greatest chance to strike. Now, when they least expect it, my attack must be foolproof, irresistible, all-powerful. Professor X calling. Red alert! Red alert! Mayday! Mayday! Huh? Hurry! There he is. Atuma is astounded at the careening truck coming his way. The water have a cushion the bomb's impact. No one is harmed except Atuma's fast force. Let us visit the coast and see how mankind fares in its desperate battle. The great skyscraper begins to rise from its foundation. The building, it's floating into the air. We're going higher. Faster. This is your doing, Submariner. You can stop this. I can't, you fools. I merely planted the trap. But it has been triggered by Dr. Doom. To hear these words, 
I can tell you that we are near to the close of your little journey. But before I part with your delightful company, I shall set this building on a collision course with the sun, which I am certain will receive you warmly. <laughs> With the agility of a porpoise, the courage of a tiger shark, the mighty Prince of Atlantis leaps from meteorite to meteorite. Now for the reckoning. But suddenly, at the flip of a control lever from inside the ship, an all-powerful band of magnetism pins the submariner to the steel hull of the cabin. King, that's the end of Neymar at last. Now all I need do is depress this lever to break contact and the building will spiral into the sun. The whole cabin is charged with electricity, enough to destroy you forever. I stored that charge like an electric eel and now I'm returning it at full voltage. Fire on! I must get out before I'm electrocuted. Stronger than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. The sailor of Atlantis is the prince of the deep.